This edition of Digital Futures has us diving into quite an explosive issue, that of cybersecurity. The cost of cybercrime globally stands at approximately 400 billion US dollars per year. And it's important to bear in mind that these threats don't affect solely businesses, but impact us individually. And cybersecurity isn't just an IT issue anymore. We need to protect ourselves online, whether it's shopping, banking, or simply socializing. For instance, in the UK, research reveals a shocking lack of awareness. Over half of those surveyed had never bothered to install security on their devices. Trends like bring your own device make this situation even trickier to navigate. Recent research found that 81% of us use personal devices for work, and yet many companies don't have a security strategy in place to tackle this. Now with safety measures comes more creative strategies from the attackers, with hackers using the employee's browsing activity to get into the company systems. Let's not forget that cybersecurity isn't just about a company's intellectual property. It can also massively damage their image, relationship with their customers, and trust. So what steps should we be taking? We caught up with a cyber forensics expert, global security pro, a researcher and ethical hacker to give us their take. If you take 10 people in the street and ask them about the dangers of not having an antivirus on their phone or downloading apps for free from unknown sources, they don't even know what you're talking about. And the reality is that those applications have access to making phone calls, which cost you money, or SMS. They have access to reading your email if you're in your corporate network or scanning the, the systems of your corporate network. This isn't like if you get your house burgled. If you get your house burgled, you know because you spend time staring at a point where your television used to be and your television isn't there anymore. Um, but when you have your data stolen, it's, it's not tangible in the same way. It can be taken from you in plain sight. One of the big mistakes that companies make is to think that they can solve their data security problems simply by buying some new software and telling the IT department to get on with it. It's about business transformation, about taking responsibility at every level of the organisation. Ironically, most companies take cyber security seriously as soon as they've um, had a data breach, as soon as somebody gets in, as soon as they've got the press knocking on their door. It used to be that you apply one measure, like one firewall, one layer of cryptography, one layer of secure communications, but you know that all of them at some point are going to be breaking. Uh, probably not all of them are going to be broken at the same time. That, that's why these days you apply as many as possible. The old idea that antivirus and firewall is enough. I've got corporate antivirus, I've got firewall, I'm going to be fine, right? Those days are done. It isn't like that anymore, right? Most of these attacks, cross-site scripting, uh, remote file inclusion, SQL injection, they, they, they're not stopped by firewalls. They're, they're not going to be picked up by your, your antivirus. And they are the most common types of attack that take place. Pain is a really good motivator, sadly, and so is shame. And one of the things that will make companies take this a lot more seriously is if they are suffering commercially or possibly civil liability or maybe even criminal liability. Small businesses uh, are the first target for automated attacks and scanners. They just live by default, and default is insecure. If you're a small company, eight, nine, ten people or something, for example, and you have a, a cyber attack, somebody breaks in and, and it steals your financial records or your blueprints or your ideas, then you know, that business is out of business. It's very inexpensive to go on the internet and hi hire someone to do something that can damage either economically or the reputation of your direct competitor or your ex-employer. The way to combat that is really to put yourself in the, eye, in the eyes of the criminal. Um, now, I mean, if you're a cyber criminal, you have an arsenal of weapons and you're pretty much guaranteed to get into any organisation as long as you try hard enough or spend enough money or find the right people. As security professionals, we're not always just catching up with what's happening in the cyber crime side of it. We're just trying to come up with new concepts that can prevent the attacks or can help users be protected. I like one concept that we recently developed is called Latch. It's a, it's a product. And what it does is it gives you control on when your credentials are working. Like let's say you have this username and password and you have this form to type it in. It's 24 hours a day open, right? What if you from your mobile phone could say, I'm only allowed to enter my username and password right now. Open it, type it, close it. That's Latch. I mean, the most sort of interesting things I'm hearing about the hacker community is um, you know, hackers setting up legitimate businesses, uh, employing people who think they're doing a genuine real job as researchers, but in fact 
and that company is carrying out attacks on, on, on other companies. If we can uh, form an association with both law enforcement and with the vendors, we can collaborate and, and uh, all use our strategic advantages, if you like, together to, to help mitigate the threat of cybercrime. One problem that we have these days is a legal problem. There's different governments that don't talk to each other, which means that if you're chasing a cyber criminal, it's very hard to catch if it's not in your country. This means that it's also very really inexpensive to go on the internet, find these cyber criminals somewhere out there, and they will just crack an, an organization for you if it's an easy catch. Going forward, I think that the big thing will be dealing with really small devices. At the moment, a telephone is quite conspicuous. In future, a bugging device can be as small as a cufflink or an earring. Yeah, the real issue is still, is still going to be people. I mean, the people are always prone to error, and no matter what, what, what product you get, you, know, you get the best product in the world, you could uh, stick a default password or password in it, and someone could get in just, just like that. You know, we're no longer in a situation where it's a case of if I'm going to get breached. It's more a case of how often you're going to be breached and how long those people are going to be in for. Bearing that in mind, we need to catch them quickly and get them out of your network, and that's the, the primary, most important thing.